Howdy, the old buggy whip maker again, Tubal Kane. Show you a little more, bit more of uh, old technology today. Here's a couple engines that I built. They're actually the same engine, just <clears throat> one is more highly finished than the other. This particular engine here uh, is modeled after one that the Creeders Company used. And Creeders in Chicago, Illinois, a hundred years ago, made popcorn wagons and of course the popcorn wagons required a small steam engine to uh, turn the uh, popcorn popper on the peanut roaster and this was the a smaller version of the engine. Their engines are highly collectible but this is an oscillating type and of course it's reduced in size as well. So it's an oscillating or wobbler type double acting meaning that the air or the steam acts on both end of the pistons. <clears throat> now I'm going to run these here in a few minutes. First I think I'll show you what the patterns look like and then the castings, the rough castings. Now these patterns that I made several years back are of course are all wood and this is the base and you can see it's hollow on the bottom. Uh, wooden foundry patterns have to be tapered in every direction so they'll pull out of the foundry sand and that's called the draft. So it takes a long time to make a pattern, sometimes longer than what the whole engine itself takes once you have your castings. These little high spots here are called bosses and those can be then machined off so we have a, a true surface. Here's the cylinder casting and I think I've shown this in another video. It's a split pattern and my fingers are holding the core print and the core print produced a hollow casting. And the purpose of this stem here is to hold it in the lathe while you do certain operations or holding it in the mill. What I found with some of the commercially made uh, patterns or castings rather, that uh, they're impossible to hold. They just, they just defy logic. Small pieces and intricate and you, you crush them in the chuck. So some of my patterns are designed such that uh, holding of them is thought about ahead of time and then that can be amputated as the final step. These are the little pedi bearing pedestals and uh, they too have a, a, a place to hold onto them while we clean them up in the lathe or do the other operations, the drilling on the milling machine. And another split pattern here is the pedestal that holds the uh, <coughs> uh, the cylinder. Uh, Tubalcane is suffering from a little cold here after New Year's. Here are some of the rough castings. Uh, I don't have a base to show you, but I think I got most of the other ones here. Uh, here's the little uh, Creeters casting. It says Creeters and Company, Chicago, Illinois, and that was uh, screwed onto the final product. The uh, cylinder casting here, again, there was a core in there, so that hole was cast in and then only needs to be uh, final drilled and reamed uh, to the or board, whatever I decided on to the final size and so you can see the purpose of the core print. There's the uh, little casting that uh, the cylinder mounts on to or and oscillates on and there's the two castings that are the bearing mounts. And now there's, you can see I think where these various castings go. And then of course it uses my omnipresent standard flywheel casting that I like to use on uh, most of my little projects so I have, always have some of these in stock and I try to scale the other models around this so that I, uh, I, I don't have to worry about and waste my time making flywheels. These flywheels are hard lead. Now I've taken considerable abuse from people saying what are you doing with a lead flywheel are too soft and in a way they are too soft but they're nice and heavy and they're made of hard lead that is to say wheel weights if you ever uh, take a wheel weight off of a car the big long ones you can break them in half they'll bend a little bit but then they'll break same thing with type lead some of this is type lead the old handset type or linotype uh, lead had antimony in it and it made it uh, rather hard uh, hard enough to machine doesn't machine real great but that uh, 
these little flywheels then are heavy enough that they have great inertia and the engines run nicely. Okay, next we'll run the two little engines. Well, there they are, running at a low speed, but we've got about 8 or 10 pounds per square inch of compressed air behind them, and of course divide that by 2. Or, and uh, I think they'll run on about 4 or 5 singly. They run about the same, and uh, run real smooth and nice, rather silent. That's one of the beauties of a steam engines, is their silence. It's fun to watch the motion. At the end of the video, I'll put several close-up stills, if anyone's interested in seeing some of those parts close up. Matter of fact, if, uh, if it pleases the jury, I will take some close-ups of the porting. That is, I'll take the cylinder off there and show how they ported. I think I did that in one of the other videos, because I have used this particular cylinder in several other applications, simply because it was off the shelf and I didn't have to uh, start from scratch. There's a close-up of the painted one. I hope that's in focus. That's about as close as I can get with the video format. I can get a little closer with the still. And that's why I was going to put a few stills at the end. Hope you enjoyed looking at these little engines. This is Tubal Kane saying so long for now.